Hi, this is Angela with Angela'sHomemade.com, and I am coming to you guys today with a soap, um, homemade soap tutorial. I am doing this video for a friend that asked um, me to show her how I make my soap, so I thought I would share uh, that information, pass that on to you guys. Uh, this first portion of the um, video is going to be about safety. Um, I wanted to share with you guys some essential, essential, essential um, things that you need to keep yourself safe because you will be working with sodium hydroxide and you do not want to uh, harm yourself or harm um, any others that are in the vicinity. First I would say that you want to be in um, a clean, sterile, and preferably empty area. Um, I do my soaping in the kitchen uh, when generally um, most of my family is asleep or in another room um, because the fumes from the um, sodium hydroxide lye do rise up and they can cause um, coughing and burning and you just don't want to harm anybody in your family. If you do have any pets, I suggest that you also um, put them in another room um, away from your working area. Also, you, you mean you don't want your pets in your area. So, um, and then you don't want them to smell the light as well. So, um, other things that you need to do is uh, make sure that you have uh, gloves. I tend to use uh, vinyl gloves, not latex, because if I'm giving it away to family or I'm selling it or anything of that nature, a lot of people are um, allergic to latex and you don't want to take the risk of, because you're, you're physically handling your soap, you don't want to take the risk of somebody that has that allergy to get a hold of your soap and then become allergic to it because of the latex. Another thing. Another thing that you're going to want to use is a face mask uh, because like I said uh, you will be um, handling lye and um, lye um, as it is clearing and you're stirring causes uh, toxic fumes and you don't want to ingest it or you start coughing um, so to protect yourself, uh, go ahead and get you one of these masks. They sell them everywhere, so uh, these are not a problem to get. Another thing uh, would be a thermometer. This is an infrared thermometer, and I'll show you how to use this a little bit later while I'm actually doing the soap tutorial. I just recently got this, uh, so before I was using a candy thermometer. Uh, that you can get at Walmart um, or any cooking store. Uh, it's just whatever your preference is. These are a little bit more expensive. But I make soap um, quite often for my family and my friends and I also um, sell my soap so I wanted to get something that was a little bit more accurate and basically you push the button and thing comes on and it'll tell you the temperature of the soap. Temperature, uh, knowing the exact temperature of your lye water, your oils and all that is extremely important so you want to um, have the most accurate um, information. And just as another precaution, you want to have your safety goggles. This is important because if you're stirring with uh, your, well, when you're stirring your um, soap batter with your electric um, blender, handheld blender, or your whisk, or whatever the case may be, you could get splashes and you don't want anything to mess up your eyesight um, any more than it might already be. So I always use um, goggles in order to protect my eyes gloves to protect my hands and this to protect my mouth so stay tuned for the actual tutorial i hope you enjoy if you have any questions please let me know um angelashomemade.com thank you and i would say just as a tip to always have some vinegar uh, vinegar neutralizes the lye so if you ever get it splashed on you, um, it won't burn. So lye does burn if it gets um, contact with your eyes or your skin. So you always want to have be close to some water and then have vinegar next to you so that you can uh, neutralize any burn that may occur. Stop. 
Step 1. Set out all your utensils you will be using. If you are using essential oils or fragrance oils, go ahead and measure those out at this time. Step 2. Line any molds or if using a silicone mold, make sure that they are clean. Step 3. Measure out your lye. Measure out your distilled water. Pour the lye into the water and stir until clear. Set this aside. Measure out all oils and in a double boiler or microwave, heat the oils until they are temperature between 100 and 120 degrees. If it is higher, set it aside to let cool. Step five, add the lye solution to the oils, whisk lye into the oils. Once lye water solution has been added, place your stick blender into the soap mixture. Blend with the stick blender until soap begins to trace. You will know the soap is at trace when the soap mixture reaches a thin, pudding-like stage and the mixture lifts off itself, leaving traces. If you are adding color, now is the time. Now that your soap mixture is reaching trace, step six, add your essential oil or fragrance oils and stir well. Now you must work quickly. Step 7. Pour your trace soap mixture into your mold. Wrap your soap in towels to retain heat. The soap will go through a gel phase. The gel phase is when lye is continuing to work on your soap mixture, heating it up until it takes a gelled look, similar to Vaseline. Slowly it cools back down and the process completes itself. Step 8. Let your soap mixture set in the mold for 24 hours. After the 24 hours, you can unmold. Step 9. Soap needs curing time. Allow soap to cure for four to six weeks in a well-ventilated area away from air conditioners and heaters. Once it has secured, enjoy your soap.